One of the highlights of pregnancy has got to be registering for baby gifts. But now that all of that stuff is off the shelves and in your house, you might be wondering, okay, how much of the stuff does my baby actually need? We're going to help you discern that and more today in this helpful conversation with experienced mamas and a baby gear expert. This is Newbies. He's gorgeous. Um, it's a girl. Surprise! The whole family's here. So when are you having the next one? It's just poop. Ready for another? Wow, you look really tired. Ready to go back to work? Yellow poop? Seriously? Did you sterilize this? Sex? Now? You've got to be joking. You should sleep when the baby sleeps. She doesn't look anything like you. I thought you already had your baby. I did. Babies don't come with instructions, so there's newbies, helping new moms and new babies through the first year. Welcome to Newbies listeners. Newbies is your online, on-the-go support group guiding new mothers through their baby's first year. I'm Natalie Gross. I have a four-year-old boy and a baby girl. We've got a great show today talking about baby gear. Now, if you haven't already, you can visit our website at newmommymedia.com and hit subscribe on our weekly newsletter, which keeps you updated on all of the episodes that we release each week. Another great way to stay updated is to hit that subscribe button in your podcast app, wherever you're listening right now. And if you're looking for a way to get even more involved with our show, then check out our membership club called Mighty Moms. That's where we chat more about the topics discussed here on the show. And it's also an easy way to learn about our recordings so that maybe you can join us live. I'd like to introduce moms Jamie Flack and Christiana Morton, who are joining me for this discussion today. Our featured expert, Megan Larson from Goodbye Gear, will also be joining us a little later on in the show. But first, mamas, thank you so much for being here. Let's kick it off with some introductions. So tell us a little bit about you and your family and your experience with baby gear. Jamie, do you want to go first? So I am a mom of four. Um, Casey, my oldest and only girl, she's eight. And then Jesse's five, Oliver's three. Tucker is um, 11 months, almost really close to one. Um, And we live in Buffalo. Awesome. And so you've had quite a lot of baby gear with four kids, I'm sure. Indeed. It grows each time. (laughs) (laughs) Great. Christiana, what about you? I have an eight-year-old girl and I have almost very close to being six-year-old boy-girl twins. And we have gone through a lot of baby gear, things that I thought I needed with my first and either didn't use or didn't use as much as I thought I would. And then with twins, I thought, oh no, I need double of everything. And some things I did need double and some things I did not need double. Um, And so it was kind of a, a learning curve, definitely for singleton to boy girl twins. Mm -hmm, I bet. Well, think back to when you were registering for baby gifts. How did you go about deciding what baby gear you wanted? How much research did you do? Did you go more by appearance? What would look good in your space or the price? Tell me kind of what went into those decisions. Well, when we um, were first pregnant, we had a tiny little apartment. Casey was only had kind of like a half room in between our room and the bathroom and didn't have a door on it or anything even between like separating that from the living room. So we were trying to just only get what we needed. We really didn't even have a large amount of storage space like outside of the apartment. So we did some research, but I would say it was mostly like word of mouth um, with more experienced parents or even just like my favorite is just to put it out on Facebook and see <laughs> showing that I'm a millennial still using Facebook. But um, and then um, the, the price was definitely important to us, too. We try to I don't know that just I don't work or anything. So we just the cheapest probably is the best unless it was going to be something somebody got for us. Um, but we, we shopped it around at Target and. Then we shopped it. I remember we went to Toys R Us um, for <laughs> our stroller specifically because we wanted to make sure it was compact and you know easy to use. Um, so that was kind of a fun memory. But I don't, I don't. You probably can't do that anymore. I don't think with Toys R Us. <laughs> um, but that was that. Those were the things we were thinking about at that point. It wasn't so much um, what it looked like. It was just can we fit it in our house and do we need it, kind of thing. Yeah. 
for me, I did not know what I was doing. Um, I did not know what <laughs> to register for. Um, I thought I kind of knew what I needed, but then when I got to the store, it was so overwhelming. And I don't know, do people even go to the store anymore? They probably like <laughs> shop online or do Amazon accounts. But when I was doing it, we went to the store, we went to um, Target and Bye Bye Baby. Um, and we just kind of held the little gun to um, scan everything that we wanted. And at first I was being really like pragmatic about it. Like, okay, we're going to get things that are cost effective and things that I know we're going to use. And then we went down one aisle and, and I knew I had 85 more aisles to go to. And then we just kind of shot all the little <laughs> barcodes with everything. And then um, I never really did any research on anything. It was kind of things that I thought that we needed, not knowing what we needed and things that maybe would look good with the decor that we were going with. I didn't know if I was having a boy or girl. And I also knew that we wanted to have more than one baby. So we kind of went with gender neutral things, which I'm actually glad that we did because we had a girl and then a boy and a girl. So um, I'm glad we didn't go with just girl and then end up with pink everything for my son. So that was good. Um, yeah. So I, I kind of also went off of price after a while too, because I felt bad for people who were going to be buying gifts and spending a lot of money on things, but we also didn't go with the cheapest either. So we kind of went gender neutral, kind of in the middle with price also. Okay. Well, now that you are experienced moms, what would you say are three pieces of baby gear you cannot live without? I would say because of that space that we were in, we had to have a white noise machine. Casey's still, she's eight. If you turn off her white noise, she will wake up. So um, we still, that's very, <laughs> we have to have that one for us personally. And then I have used a baby carrier a ton, especially once I had a second child and maybe one's in the stroller and the baby's in the carrier, whether I really like the Ergo Baby 361, that's the one we've used the most. Um, but when they're tiny, tiny, the Solly Baby wraps are really nice too. Our baby swing is probably the third one we've used the most. All our kids have liked that. And you know, you never really know when you're pregnant what your baby is going to like. So I always say that it's nice if you have like a church nursery or just friends that have baby gear and can afford to wait until the baby's born to try, try a couple things out that that would be like ideal. But generally speaking, like that swing was great. It's, it went two different directions. And so I guess you've got a little more chance that they're going to like it. And we use that for, for all of our kids. We actually borrowed one first and then we bought one secondhand um, and have used it. And it's just about ready to just it's not going to last any longer. Thankfully, but we're on our last kid, so we made it that far. And and then if I could share a bonus one, it would be obviously a breast pump because we nursed. And um, even just a hand pump is just very helpful to have um, for car trips or whatever. So just just have to throw out that bonus. The, that was definitely an essential too. <laughs> and is that your baby there we hear? <laughs> yes, the baby woke up from his nap earlier than I hope. <laughs> no worries. He's the expert on baby gear after all. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. All right, Christiana, what about you? I would say um, number one would be a stroller. I definitely used a Moby wrap and an Ergo to carry all three of my kids around many times, but a stroller definitely. Personally, for my single baby, the three-wheeled stroller was definitely the best because I could turn on a dime, you know, to go around the sticks while we're walking or at the store. That was definitely the best for my twins, which was definitely my double stroller. I actually did not like the side-by-side -side stroller for my double. I liked the long. When I go <laughs> shopping at Target, I want to be able to get into the aisles and like go around each of the things to look at shirts and pants and baby clothes. And with the double a uh, wide stroller. I just could not do that. So I definitely liked my long um, stroller with lots of storage in. Huge. You got to make sure it has storage. If it's if it's anything, you have to have good storage in there and a cup holder. Um, my next one was my boppy pillow for my daughter. 
um, for nursing and for kind of resting in, I guess, like for tummy time. And then for my twins, I could not obviously use a bot because it was way too small. So for nursing my twins, I used a twin Z. Um, it's a nursing pillow for twins. And it also has a little backrest on it. So that was a ne total necessity for me. And my third would be, it's kind of twofold, but a swing for newborns was huge. I actually, that was one of the things I am so thankful that I had two of for my twins. Um, all three of my kids loved the swing, napping in the swing. Um, if I'm trying to get something done, cooking dinner or whatever, they just, they love just sitting in it. I put music on for them, love the swing, but it only lasts a certain amount of time because then they get older and they want to kind of wriggle out of the swing. So then I switched them over to an extra saucer. Mine actually was for, you know, when they can hold their head up, kind of reach the bottom, but it also, I could take it apart and they could sit or kneel while they were playing at the exercise and then I could also bump it up a little bit and they could stand at the exercise. So for me, swing slash exercise, definite necessities for me personally. Yeah. Well, those are all great. Thanks so much for sharing mamas. We are going to take a quick break and then meet our baby gear expert, Megan Larson. Stay tuned. Today on Newbies, we are continuing our conversation about baby gear. Our expert is Megan Larson. She is a mom of two and the vice president of business development at Goodbye Gear. That's good B-U-Y gear, the leading online baby and kid gear consignment brand. She also serves as Goodbye Gear's in-house gear expert, thanks to over 15 years of experience in the baby and kid retail space. So before joining Goodbye Gear, Megan held key management and director positions at Stoka, Baby Jogger, Britax, and Durrell, which those are brands I'm sure many of you guys have heard of. So Megan, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yeah. Well, your company recently came out with the top baby gear products for 2023, including the top five for first-time parents. So I would love it if you could share what those are. Absolutely. So this was a collective you know, list that we made internally. I'm not the only quote unquote expert, but collectively looking at, you know, what parents need and want the most, um, what we see parents coming to us for, and then interviewing parents who actually sell and buy with us. And at the top of the list, you know, is strollers. And I say that with a plural, not to scare anybody, but there is really no such thing as a perfect stroller. Um, so you might find a stroller that has different needs for different spaces and places, whether you live in urban area or suburban area or you're into jogging, et cetera. Um, there's a plethora of options. Um, and then eventually you realize that you can get away with a compact stroller once they're a little bit older. Um, you also need a car seat. An infant car seat is a necessity, especially if you, you know, are birthing in a hospital and you want to take the baby home, they escort you outside and make sure it's installed correctly, which is always a little bit nerve wracking. I think car seat installation in general is, and I know you've done a podcast about that. So <laughs> helping parents kind of navigate that is super important. There's a lot of anxiety around that. And I will say that many manufacturers actually offer help and video assistance with installation so that you can have a little bit of peace of mind um, if you don't have the time to go to a car seat check or to your fire department or um, local police station to get that checked. Um, there are many manufacturers that will help you through that. And then um, bottles are a necessity. And, you know, it's funny hearing Jamie and Christiana mention it depends on what your baby likes, because that's totally true. You may buy a certain brand that, you know, your sister or your friends use, and then your baby does not like it, or your baby has colic, or your baby um, has acid reflux. So um, bottles and maybe different types of bottles until you find the right one is a necessity. Um, a bassinet um, is certainly something that you'll need. Um, when the baby comes home, you'll need a space for them to sleep in. Um, and as Jamie had said, you know, they didn't have a separate room or they had a separate space, but without a door. So um, there wasn't a lot of space. And what we're seeing a lot of people doing is really going with like, the minimalist 
kind of necessities, which is very reassuring to see. Um, and bassinets are a great option so that you can figure out where baby's going to sleep, where you're comfortable with them sleeping, whether it's with you in your room or a separate room. Um, you never know kind of how you're going to feel once the baby's home. Um, and then we had carriers as the last option on the list. And this this is something that so many parents, most parents I know, most parents we speak to love them, swear by them. Um, I There's so many different brands out there and different ways to carry a child. Um, and especially if you have more than one, this comes in handy. I will say for me personally that um, my children did not like carriers. Um, so as an edit there, like my clutch item would absolutely have been my swing, um, which just hearing the other uh, parents here talking about it is a great reminder of what it was like and what came in most handy. Um, and I will add one more thing, if that's okay. Yeah. Strollers and car seats. So they can actually, they could potentially even be combined into one where you're purchasing a travel system. And that's where you get an infant car seat that will snap onto a stroller. Um, and you can choose your stroller of choice. And most stroller brands, if they don't already make a car seat or it doesn't already come in one box together with a stroller, most of them have adapters that are pretty low in price. And you could pretty much adapt a multitude of brands to the stroller that you that you really like. If you know a cup holder and storage and things like that are really important to you and a travel system that you see that comes in one box doesn't have all the features you want, you have the opportunity to look for a stroller, buy the adapter, and then get the car seat of your choice to make a travel system. Yeah, those are great tips. And I love how you said different babies are going to like different things, like what works for one baby might not. Even in like a family, I've been surprised how much my daughter has just like not loved the things I kept around from her <laughs> brother. <laughs> It's totally true. And you hear people say that even before you have a child. And then I know my, my, you know, my inner monologue was like, okay, that's ridiculous. Babies, you know, don't choose what they like. They 100% do. Yeah. <laughs> yep. They are tiny humans. <laughs> they have an opinion. Yep. Well, why does baby gear range in price so much? What should parents be aware of when they're looking for this? Because you know, sometimes we think more expensive means it must be better, right? But then you can get something similar for half the price. So how should parents kind of navigate this? It's interesting to know like the ins and outs of, the, of you know, the manufacturing side of the business. And I think that there is, you know, a misconception that maybe the super expensive items are overpriced or they're being or you're overcharged um, because they're so mainstream or sort of, you know, that coveted item that you want. But I will say there are components that go into each item that set the price, really. They, the manufacturers are not making up the price. There's literally cost of goods that you have to cover um, in order to then, you know, sell either direct. If a, if a company is selling direct to a consumer, you're going to get a better price from that company because they're not dealing with a middleman like a retailer where they have to then have a markup for the retailer and the retailer has a markup from there. So there's direct to consumer brands where you're going to get a better price. Um, and then there's also, you have your low end, lower end travel systems. And I wouldn't call anything necessarily cheap. Um, I would say less expensive. Um, and in a lot of cases, maybe it doesn't have the re the look and feel that you want, or there might be, you know, more plastic components like the child tray or the parent console is made out of plastic. Maybe you don't like that and you want a higher end feel, or you want um, EVA foam filled tires. Those are more expensive, um, but they will navigate over a multitude of terrains with a lot of ease, including potholes, uneven sidewalks. Um, and then when you look at um, all the different options out there, it's great to be able to like push and feel as um, I think Jamie had said, maybe she was at Babies R Us and was able to kind of push things around and get a feel for them, um, which 
is usually important to people. And if you don't have the luxury of visiting a store to get that feel and see what you like about the functionality, um, then you can kind of go and talk to friends and see what's out there and, you know, ask somebody if you can push their stroller around. Um, but the, the pricing is vast based on the features and the materials that are going into the product to make it. And then how the, how the brands and manufacturers are distributing the product, whether they're going to retail or they're going direct to you as the consumer. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting behind the scenes insight there. I know it gets kind of technical and it's kind of boring, <laughs> but that's, that's really what it comes down to. Yeah. It's helpful to know. Well, what are some popular products or types of baby gear that you see out there that actually aren't safe? And along those lines, like how can parents learn to discern what's safe and what's not for themselves? Is there a good resource to stay on top of safety recalls? Absolutely. I mean, the go-to space for goodbye gear and for even myself, just to keep on top of knowledge, um, is the CPSC, which is cpsc.gov. Very easy to find. Um, and they will have basically every recall listed from, they cover all the, all baby items. Um, and then they cover all basically consumer brand items, um, within the U S and it'll tell you, it's usually U S and Canada, um, the impact. And then when you see a recall, there's don't panic because a lot of us do, um, there's usually more details around the recall. And oftentimes there will be a fix to that recall. So especially around car seats, you know, this is something you don't want to see that your car seat has been recalled. Um, if you read, if you actually read about the recall and figure out what the next steps are, then you might find that there's an, a simple fix that the, that the manufacturer has in order for you to fix it. And if you're not comfortable with that, usually most manufacturers will replace your seat or come up with an alternative option for you. So I would say recalls are a little bit scary when you see them, but you read into them, look into them and figure out, you know, wh what they're actually about and why. Um, I will say that sleep products in general and loungers have had a great deal of attention lately. And you know, between the ASTM, between the CPSC, there are, you know, different standards that have come out even within the past year. So they constantly get updated or not constantly, but I feel like the sleep, the cribs, um, bassinets and loungers specifically have come to light as not being the safest item. So I would say be aware that, you know, those loungers that you have that your baby might fall asleep and take a nap in you don't want to leave them there. Um, baby might get very comfortable and you don't want to move them, but just knowing the stories, you want to, you want to be cognizant of it and you want to move them to a safe air quote, safe space, like a bassinet, um, that lies flat. Any toys or anything loose that has dangling objects, definitely keep away from the baby. I mean, there's a reason why so many products, even plastic bags in the U S are, are labeled as, you know, dangerous and do not give this to a child. Um, but there's things that don't always have those tags on them. So you want to make sure that baby doesn't have access to the, to those dangling loose pieces. A lot of things go in their mouths. And the last thing I'd say is batteries. I mean, those small, tiny batteries are usually secured with screws. You want to make sure that if your baby has any electronic items, that those are tightly secured or just simply avoid the electronics. Yeah, that's great advice. What baby gear can parents wait to buy until their baby's a little bit older? Like maybe they have a small space like we've already talked about, can't have all the baby gear there at once. And maybe what's some stuff that you can get rid of after you use it in those early days? Yeah, I would say ironically, I wouldn't have said this before I had my first child, but if you can wait to buy a crib, truthfully. Um, that was something that I thought I had to have. And, you know, your nesting instinct might scream at you and be totally against this if you want to set up a nursery prior to baby coming, but having a crib and an entire nursery set up, I just, looking back, it's something I didn't do for my second child, which I kind of feel a little bit guilty about, but not, for, <laughs> <laughs> it was more out of practicality. Like I'm not going to go out and buy a brand new crib, set it up, get it perfect, knowing, knowing that they're not going to sleep in it right away. Um, knowing I had a bassinet and that, you know, I would be sleeping next to this baby 
in a bassinet that pulled up to the bed, I should say, because also sleeping with a baby is not safe, I should say. As far as like the shorter lifespan items, essentially there's things that you'll only use between that zero to six month period. You can get rid of them unless, of course, you're considering a second child and you want to keep keep hang on to them. But the bassinet um, and the swings are pretty much like when baby starts to roll over, um, unless they've met the criteria of the max weight capacity before then, which usually is about 30 pounds. So that's kind of hard to achieve with a little one. But always, if you lose a manual or something, always Google it to see what the what the capacity is. But as soon as baby kind of starts to try to attempt to roll over, the bassinets and the swings will only last you till about four months when babies start to do that. Um, the infant loungers, they the baby will probably want to become more mobile um, and will start rolling around. And that's when those infant loungers might become obsolete. You might still use them for breastfeeding and other uh, other ways, um, which I found to be really awesome and comfortable. Uh, play mats and Jiminy's, those are items where, you know, your baby spends so much time on these mats. And it's very interesting how much time they spend there or how little time they spend there and they get exhausted very quickly. <laughs> It becomes like the center of, of your life, like Groundhog Day for the first three months. Um, and they might outgrow that Jiminy. Some some do grow with your child and can turn into other things or even a mat that you could potentially take outside as something that's water resistant. But a lot of them are really just for that those first stages. Um, and then, you know, the bathtub, that also doesn't last forever, those baby bathtubs. I would say also... Um, clothes and diaper sizes like the clothes that come from you know newborn I bought so many newborn onesies and couldn't really maybe I use them for a week and then you realize okay they're in zero to three months and then they go up in size so quickly not necessarily according to age um, and diaper sizes if you buy diapers um, in various sizes and you buy it by bulk they kind of graduate to the next diaper size very quickly. So yeah. don't buy too much or be prepared to donate, which is always a great option. Um, and then, you know, some infant seats have a lower um, maximum weight capacity, which is a little bit misleading because most of them, even if they're a lower weight capacity, will last until your baby's ready for their convertible car seat, which varies by height and weight. And that's usually around nine to 12 months. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Megan, for sharing this important information. We're going to take another quick break and then bring back Jamie and Christiana to the conversation. All right. Welcome back, Jamie and Christiana. Does anyone have any baby gear hacks to share from your experience? For example, someone told me when I was pregnant with my first kid that you could just use a pack and play instead of a bassinet in our room. So that's what we ended up doing. Curious if you have any tips like that for new moms. Well, I think I kind of already said this, but trying things before you buy them, if you're able to, just so you don't end up with a whole bunch of things you can't use, your baby doesn't like. Um, but I think also this is like a little thing, but I have seen the diaper pads for the, I don't even know what you call that, but the, the cover for the diaper changing table pads that are like fully cloth. And that is a terrible idea. <laughs> like <laughs> there are wipeable ones. So make sure that you have a wipeable one. And, and then also even like the travel ones, I know that is maybe kind of not really a hack, but they are great to have a lot of diaper bags come with them. But I find that, um, like, we have two stories in our house and our changing table is upstairs. So I feel like even having an, a spare one of those downstairs for changing diapers downstairs is also very helpful. I guess the hack is there are just some things that are good to have multiples of if you have an upstairs and a downstairs that are actually worth it to have multiples of. Things like a place to store diapers upstairs and downstairs and wipes and some kind of diaper changing pad or um, something that the baby can sit in upstairs and downstairs. I think I loved what um, Christiana said about swing and then transition to exercaucer. I use exercaucer a lot and when I'm in the shower and I need to keep him 
somewhere. Um, we put him in the extra shelter in the bathroom and he gets the steam shower at the same time. And then maybe it's, we do use the pack and play for the baby's crib. So I agree with that hack. <laughs> um, but, you know, I can stick him in there upstairs. So I think um, just thinking about like what things do you want to have access to quickly and easily and not have to always run upstairs or downstairs for them and having multiples of those essential things has been helpful. Yeah. I would say for me, two hacks would be, the first would be to buy used when you can. There are so many people who buy things, think that they're going to use them and never use them. Or like a swing, my twins were able to use the swing a lot longer because they were um, a preemie and a micro preemie. But usually they only use things for a very short amount of time. And so when you buy them used, they're practically brand new still. And like half or quarter of the price. And so many times you can find find things from people that you might know for free. Um, I know somebody said about, you know, using Facebook might be like an old thing, but I know there's tons of things on Facebook, at least where I'm at. Um, Facebook Marketplace, mommy groups on there. Um, I'm not sure of anything new, like, you know, does Instagram have that? I don't think so. But, um, you know, find something somewhere that you can buy used, even like, um, what do they call them? Like a, a mommy swap um, place that you go to, um, like a school might do uh, mom to mom sales, that kind of thing. So that's one my first hack. The second one I would say would be to, if you can, buy pieces that grow with your baby. Um, the car seats are one of them where you can have it be backward facing until they're two or older, and then you can switch it around to then also be the frontward facing. Um, I'm not like an expert on <laughs> car seats, but I know that there's a lot. My daughter's in one right now that she could be forward facing in it. And then once she got tall enough, then we could take the back off and just use the bottom. Um, so buying pieces that grow with your baby or can change with your baby are huge also with um, space. <laughs> you know, if you have a smaller home, one that can be an extra saucer one day and the next day it can be a standing table that they can play at. Um, and then also price. Um, you're spending less money when you're buying only one thing that can work into two or three things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll just refer, since we've talked about car seats a lot this episode, I'll just refer listeners back to our recent episode called The Essentials of Car Seat Safety. You guys can go listen to that. Does anyone have any baby gear products that you purchased or received that you actually didn't end up using? I know you kind of started talking about this, Christiana. As you give advice to new moms, what would you say is actually non-essential? I was going to say those like cotton receiving blankets. I think I got, I don't know. I have piles of them and they're so tiny and they just don't, you can't use them for very long. But, um, we, what we did use a ton and still do are like the bigger stretchy ones. Um, like I think copper pearl is the brand that we got. Um, we love that for swaddling, but then we still use those sometimes in the car or whatever. They, they can make good nursing covers if you feel like you need it for just a minute or whatever. Um, Another thing we did not use really hardly at all, honestly, um, is like the, like uh, Megan already said this, but like the baby tub, every place we've lived has had a tub. And when they're tiny, we sometimes will use the sink. <laughs> I think many people do that. But then I think for my daughter, we used the actual plastic tub like once or twice, like probably her first bath right next to the other bath. And it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> um to do that because we already had a bath we have used like the insert maybe a little bit longer um but even that pretty quickly the baby's just laying in the tub with just a tiny bit of water so I think that is one thing that you can kind of go without uh I don't know pacifiers my kids have never really liked them so we have tons of them and different kinds um but again that's another one of those things where you kind of have to learn your baby and figure out if they're going to take it or not yeah, same with like, are they going to use bottles or not? And will you even need a bottle drying rack? I think 
we have one of those. And again, space saving wise, it takes up a lot of space on the counter. So that's another thing that doesn't really get used in our house. Yeah, I don't know. Those are a few of the things that come to my mind. For me, we had registered for a high chair, a really nice deluxe high chair that could be rolled across the floor and have the had like a tray that you could remove, but then they have another tray underneath and you could turn it into a chair later on and all these things. And we sit down as a family every single night to sit down and eat and talk together. And so I knew we were going to use this high chair. Like I just, I knew it. And we, I, it, it, I never even opened it up out of the box. Oh, wow. But, okay. <laughs> but here's the other thing to it. We have a very small kitchen and I did not think about this when I was registering because I didn't know. Somebody had given us two, which was a blessing <laughs> later on when we had twins, but they gave us two different chairs. They were a plastic orange and white and green chair with like a little um, tray that you would snap on. And I thought, oh, what in the world am I going to use this for? I don't need to bring this to, you know, somebody's house or to a restaurant or camping. Like, this is just not going to work for us. I'm going to use my big, nice high chair. And when it came down to it, we did not have room for the high chair in our kitchen. But to be able to hook this little plastic chair onto one of our chairs that we already had, and it slid underneath the table, just like all the other chairs did, it worked perfectly. And then we also, because we had gotten to ironically, when my twins came, we just used that for both of the twins also. So it was something that I was not planning to never use. But because we had something else that happened to work better for us, we ended up using that instead. Yeah, that's kind of one of those hacks too, that I never heard of. So that's great to know. <laughs> Megan, do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, I think that um, both already touched on it. And it's interesting because having having backups of things is super important. Um, if you have an upstairs and downstairs, even within your home, or if you're planning on leaving your house, having your diaper bag kind of already packed and ready to go will make it a lot smoother. It's never really smooth. Let's face it. Not in my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not. Nope, it's not. <laughs> never. I had a boss, a male boss who was older, about to be a grandfather. And we had a younger person who was expecting. And he said, I'll tell you something, you know, just so you know, your days of being smooth are over. Because she was like, I just want to look smooth carrying, you know, the baby around. So I thought that was pretty perfect um, because we all kind of feel that way when we have our, especially when we have our first, like, I just want to be smooth. Um, but I think also like, oh, uh, buying, buying use, I love that because I'm working at Goodbye Gear now um, and working from like being on the manufacturing side and working with retailers. I know how much I know how much, um, you know, kind of excess inventory there is and, you know, options for buying new um, and anything really on Goodbye Gear that people might find that's listed as open box or barely used is pretty much new. Um, and you can get those items at a discount, which is awesome. So if you bought something and it's not working for your for your baby, like, you know, the super high end bassinet that costs, you know, over a thousand dollars and your baby doesn't like it. Um, you have an option to resell it and then buy something that your baby might like and feel less guilty about it. Um, so I love that. Um, and I love having those options. And I will say like my sister had twins as her first and I watched her very intensely and was constantly over there and she had done the dream feed with her babies. Um, which is basically, you know, like a car topping off the tank. You just, mm -hmm. before you go to bed, you feed the baby um, and hopefully stretch them out longer um, through the night. And then diaper rashes were a big issue with my first um, child and it got so bad. Uh, we had to buy super expensive cream and it was $500 even with insurance. Um, and then a neighbor finally told me she, her youngest was like eight years old. So I never thought to ask her. But um, caldecine powder had worked wonders and we were still using it in our house now um, for my daughter. So it's just those little things. Don't be afraid to ask friends or family what they've done or what they've used. I, and I'm always like so proud of people who ask for opinions um, and ask like, what did you do in this situation? And I can't get this figured out. Nobody knows and nobody can, nobody has the right answer for everything. But 
ask friends, ask family or ask the stranger at the playground um, because we've all been through it and we've all we've all tried to figure it out. So use each other. Yeah. Well, that is a really good place to wrap our conversation today. Thank you so much to all of you, Megan, Jamie, Christiana, for joining me. Listeners, you can find out more about Goodbye Gear at goodbyegear.com. Again, that's by spelled B-U-Y. Also, check out newmommymedia.com where we have all of our podcast episodes plus videos and more. That wraps up our show for today. We appreciate you listening to Newbies. Don't forget to check out our sister shows, Preggy Pals for expecting parents, Parent Savers for moms and dads with toddlers, The Boob Group for moms who give breast milk to their babies, and Twin Talks for parents of multiples. Thanks for listening to Newbies, your go-to source for new moms and new babies. This has been a New Mommy Media Production. The information and material contained in this episode are presented for educational purposes only. Statements and opinions expressed in this episode are not necessarily those of New Mommy Media and should not be considered facts. While such information and materials are believed to be accurate, it is not intended to replace or substitute for professional medical advice or care and should not be used for diagnosing or treating health care problem or disease or prescribing any medication. If you have questions or concerns regarding your physical or mental health or the health of your baby, please seek assistance from a qualified health care provider. Hey, mamas. Don't forget to check out Mighty Moms. It's our online community built for new moms just like you. Not only can you connect with other moms, but you can also join us backstage for special mom-only online events. And you'll also be notified when we're recording so you can join us as a special guest. Visit our website, newmommymedia.com, and click on the Mighty Moms banner. It's free. That's newmommymedia.com. See you there.